Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. Here's your pastor and host, Dr. Frida Cruz. Thank you for joining us on Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and joining me today is author, pastor, and founder of Glory Tabernacle International Ministries and Church, Michael Bacon, whose book titled, Broken for a Purpose, he and I will be discussing today. Most Christians do not know the importance of brokenness in a believer's life. If we want to be who God has called us to be, we must allow God to take us through periods of testing, trials, and breaking. In fact, we are broken for a purpose. God must strip us of anything that stands in the way of our being a usable disciple of His. Part of the salvation experience is a transformation process where God seeks to destroy the hindrances that are in the way of our becoming obedient persons surrendered to His will for our lives. Our purpose in life can only be found by submitting to the breaking process that God takes every believer through at some time in their life. For more, stay with us. And Michael, there are going to be viewers that wonder what in the world we're going to be talking about, talking about Broken for a Purpose, because when I saw your book mm. and uh, went through it to decide if I were going to get a review copy uh, and have you on the show, I had to find out exactly what you meant, and yet I was interested in finding out what you meant by being broken for a purpose. And then as I prepared for today, I totally, totally enjoyed um, your using the breaking of horses uh, <laughs> to make your point uh, in the book. Now, as I told you while we were off camera, I grew up on, a, on, on two farms, my dad's farm and my grandparents' big farm. And we had horses and we had mules though. <laughs> uh, and uh, some, uh, I think it was the mules that pulled the plows and um, so forth. We didn't have any donkeys, just horses and mules. And they, uh, cause there was no car. There was no automobile. My dad had one, but my grandfather never had an automobile. And he used those horses uh, to go to town, our small town, uh, and uh, get groceries and get their supplies and pulling a wagon, pulling a wagon. So I, I can, rem my memories date back a long time of the original America, the way I think it used to be. And it, well, it used to be, I didn't think it for me and for a lot of people, it's so changed. It's so changed. I, I pray every day for God to turn America back mm, uh, to Him and to where it it was, if necessary. That doesn't mean he has to take away all of these contemporary um, in the media and all of that to do that. But we need to be the people. We need to be the people and honor God Amen. that America did from early on. Uh, is what is what I'm getting at. That's not what your show is about or the show is about today. But uh, the horse situation does bring back a lot of memories uh, for me. And I think about how popular cowboys uh, were in, uh, in the songs and the oh, yeah. movies that we used to get to go see with Roy, or, uh, what is it, Roy Autry? Roy, yeah, well, I, think, I thought you were talking about Roy Rogers. Roy <laughs> Rogers, no, I'm, I meant Roy Rogers. And, uh, and uh, so on, on Saturday night, we, my parents took us to the movies, and uh, it would be, it would always be a, usually a cowboy movie. Yeah, I love cowboy movies. <laughs> you love cowboy movies? I love movies. them, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to do a lot of quoting from your book okay. so that they get, they get, get what we're, what you're talking about. And, uh, and the scriptures, I love and appreciate so much that you use so many scriptures uh, to back up, as it were, um, what you're trying uh, to say. Well, thank you. That um, we, like a horse, 
uh, when we enter God's kingdom, uh, we, uh, we have to go through some breaking times. Amen. You want to speak a little bit on that before? I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, this, this book is very personal to me because uh, I didn't write a book just to write a book. I wrote it because of my own life experiences and uh, my experiences coming into Christ and my life since giving my life to Christ and what it's been like. And yeah, breaking is an important word in my life and I believe many people's lives. And the problem with that word though is that a lot of times we think of it in a negative way when in reality, God breaks us so He can rebuild us the way He wants to rebuild us. So when I say the word breaking or broken, it's, it's not a negative uh, term or terms. It's more or less the process that God takes us through as believers. As the Bible talks about going glory to glory to glory, or from one level one of glory, of my scriptures, mine yeah. too, right? Well, one level of glory to the next level of glory. It's all about how God has taken us to that next level. But as you know, we can't take the old man with us into what God has. So I believe after we get saved that God's continually breaking us over and over again, not even one time, but it's a process He takes us through to take us to the next level in Him. So we're usable in the kingdom of God. Yes. Well, we don't want, though, to be presenting God in an ugly That's way. Right. Uh, <laughs> As you brought out when you, you're talking about horses, uh, breaking horses in your book, that you don't beat them down, so that's to right. speak. It does. That's not the approach God takes with us when He's breaking us. He's not beating us down. So many people fear God. Yes. Uh, they um, they even follow Him out of fear. That's true. Rather than out of trust, and if we uh, for those that refuse to believe He is God, for those who uh, refuse to ever trust Him as their Lord, uh, their, His Son as their Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. and um, are ugly and mean and continue in their sin, they have reason to fear God. Amen. Though. He can get fierce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he can. I, he can get God fierce. help us when we're in rebellion, that's oh, for sure. Oh, goodness, that can be fearful, can, can't it? Amen, very much yeah, so. But yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. I'll, I'll say that, um, to your point, you know, when I was writing this book, it's because of the love of God that he disciplines us. The Bible talks about that, right? He, he, he disciplines those he it's loves. It's not his anger. It's, it's not, not his anger, anger, right, because I grew up in an abusive father. And for one of the ch biggest challenges for me was to be able to receive from God because I was abused as a child but in the kingdom of God, being able to trust God with my life, knowing that He loves me, that He has the best in mind for me and my family and my future, to your point. That's a, that's a good point you made. We will never be abused by God. We will be disciplined that's right. uh, by God, but we will never be abused, even those that finally go out not knowing Him. It will not be abuse. Amen. It will be uh, uh, judgment. Uh, because they, uh, you know, they have refused to repent and uh, come to Him and allow Him to be God, as it were, uh, in their lives. So I've got some uh, script. I want to start out Amen. with quoting something right out of your book. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, and it says, The call to walk as sons and daughters of God as Christ followers, oh, I, t I tell the Lord every day and Jesus Amen. every day, I, I truly want to be a Christ follower. Amen. And as the early Christians were called, I want to be a little Christ. Amen. Um, as Christ followers, as representatives of our Heavenly Father in the earth is one of the most exciting Amen. and fulfilling pursuits we can have. God's training and breaking process is our Christian walk. Amen. Broken for a purpose will encourage you to grasp God's greater plan and purpose across the seasons of life, resulting in a glory to glory growth mm. and intimacy with Father God through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to let you pick up right there <laughs> where you left off a, a little earlier mm -hmm. about not having always been a child of God and yes. coming to know Jesus Christ after a pretty hard life you lived uh, yes, very uh, and left, uh, when, which we have to do 
uh, when we come to, to Jesus Christ. Do you have some words to add to this? Uh, ab absolutely. Um, you know, being that I wasn't raised in the church, I, when I was a child, just to put it bluntly, I used to pray every night, even though I didn't know God. And my prayer every night was that God would kill me. That was my prayer. I didn't know love. I didn't know mercy. I didn't understand forgiveness. And so even after I came to Christ later, it was through a, an act of uh, desperation because I tried to kill myself. I, I actually tried to commit suicide on a mountainside in Germany. And right before I did, I prayed if God was real, He'd let me live. And, and uh, my car went off the mountain. I was frightened because I thought I'd be dead. But when I came down the mountain, God had spared my life. And I came to Him and I gave my life to Him. And I thought, well, okay, everything's going to be better now. But as I quickly learned, uh, as you pointed out, God's not a harsh God. God's not a God that abuses us. He's a God that loves us. And even after giving my life to God because of my earthly father and my relationship with him, which who I now have a great relationship with and love him and we've been restored. And I have so many scenarios I could talk about, stories I can tell you about that happened because he's not even my biological father. I was actually lied to most of my life that my dad was my dad, but he wasn't. And when I got saved at 21 years old, the Lord said, your father is not your biological father. Went to my mother, found out that I actually had another dad. So I had to practice a lot of forgiveness and things. But to your point, I went from knowing that there's a God, accepting God into my life through Christ Jesus, but then realizing later that even then I had to be delivered of things. I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off. It's time for a break, but I want to okay. come right back there. All right, right? great. I want to start right back there, so don't forget where you are I, with, I will remember. Uh, Thank you. with your story, okay? Thank you. And we will be right back. When life fails to deliver what we are expecting from it, we can easily become discouraged and sometimes hopeless, or as our guest has written, unaware that we are experiencing a season when God is breaking us for His own purpose. Consciously or unconsciously, all of us are on a search in life, a search for purpose and meaning. This is part of the image of God that is inherent within our very being. But with the great fall in the Garden of Eden, our sense of purpose and meaning became greatly distorted. The first men and women known as Adam and Eve, as they came from the hand of God, were whole and complete and would have known that their purpose was to honor and obey their Creator in all that He directed them. However, they possessed a freedom to choose whether or not they would continue to fulfill the purpose for which they were created or go in another direction. They chose to follow the example of Satan, who disguised himself in the form of a beautiful serpent and consequently lost their clear-cut sense of purpose and meaning they were created with. Their decision affected not only themselves, but all who came through their procreation. And this is where our search originated. How can we remain hopeful as we persist in our search? You can ask yourselves such questions as, what is it that I feel is missing in my life? How am I going about trying to find the missing pieces? What do I desire to do with my life? What do I believe will provide me with the purpose and meaning I am searching for? Your answers to these questions could be life-changing revelations. You might discover you are on the right track to realizing your dreams and fulfilling your purpose in life or learn that you don't have a clue related to what you are longing for. If the latter is true, it is time for change. The first one must be that you believe you were created for a purpose-filled life that will give you meaning. The wise man, King Solomon, had everything the world has to offer, but declared everything is meaningless. 
He meant the things of this world do not bring satisfaction if our focus is on them as an end in themselves. Jesus related in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Today, our guest is Michael Bacon, and we are discussing his book titled, Broken for a Purpose. And Michael, before I have you pick up exactly where you left off uh, as you were giving a personal, uh, some personal things about yourself and your experience, and because it comes to where I found so many people that have come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior early on. Uh, my ministry started out with my husband being the pastor and my being a Sunday school teacher. And back then, to start with early on, I could only teach women, by the way. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. There was a time that loads of preachers went through. A woman was never uh, nice. to teach a man uh, and uh, so forth. And there are still battles today about Absolutely. what women can do in the church and what they can't do in the church. And we had a recent one I told you about off yeah. stage we're not going to go uh, into. But God God's using women more and more. Yes, uh, he is, it, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know what in the world they do with people like Deborah in the Old Testament. They, they and, have to explain that one away. <laughs> well, they have to explain that one away and some others, don't they? they uh, yes, absolutely. There's no way they, they can explain yeah. it away either. But I know where they were coming from in New Testament. New Testament times when some of the scriptures they use are there, but they haven't bothered to find out, you know, why and um, so on and so forth. But in, in teaching uh, Sunday school classes, uh, and eventually my husband allowed men to join my Sunday school classes, by the way, as oh, well wow. as women. And um, I had one that was uh, uh, transgenerational, and that was one of the best Sunday school classes I ever had, and it, uh, it, it was good and uh, enjoyable. Um, but I found early on with Christians, uh, people becoming a Christian, coming from sin and, and wrong and uh, ignorance and all that kind of thing about the Bible and about what was ahead of them and so forth. I found early on that they think once they're saved, it's just going to be heaven on earth. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and that suddenly they find out that's not true and they don't know if they're saved or lost or have sinned bad, so bad against God he's mad at them. They don't know. And I've had to teach that. Uh, and help them. I became a counselor in the process, had I have a degree in counseling, and um, to teach uh, and to teach early believers that mm. uh, was part of my early counseling experience. That that's not the way it is. So I want you to pick up there. That's where you wow. were when we went off. Well, I believe. well, thanks for sharing that about yourself too. Yeah. So what I was beginning to talk about for the break was, you know. I gave my life to Christ, and somehow I thought that was going to fix every problem that I had. And I thought my walk with God would be easy. But there were still a lot of things in me from past hurts, past wounds, things in my heart that I hadn't dealt with the right way. And uh, early on, God used me powerfully. I had a homeless ministry, and I was doing many things for Christ. But I was a, what I call a lukewarm Christian because there were still things in me that were not right in my heart. And even though I knew who God was, I didn't know God. I, I hadn't started the process of identifying Him as my Father, as the one that I could talk to, that I could experience every day, that I could allow into my heart to help me with the everyday problems that I was having. And so I thought the answer was just, uh, you know, be as religious as I can be, um, you know, go and do ministry, serve God, fear God, as you were mentioning, even had a fear of God because I didn't know the love of God. So what ended up happening is God really allowed me to go through some hardships, which was part of my breaking process. See, I was just reading in Judges the other day about how God had spared some of Israel's enemies so that he could use them to test their obedience to God. And I was reflecting on that even yesterday when I was thinking about the meeting today. 
about how God allows the hardships, even our enemies, to be the very instruments that He uses to test us and our obedience to God. But it's bigger than that. My obedience comes because of my love to Him. And when we love God, we want to obey God. But when we're trying to obey Him because of the letter of law, it's hard to do that. I can never measure up. I'll never be good enough. I'll never, uh, you know, I'll never be what I think somebody should be in terms of a Christian. But knowing God, allowing Him to take my mistakes and use them, allowing Him to love me when I don't feel unlovable, that was a process through those hardships that God taught me who God was. I got to learn who He is as my daddy, as my father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, t I totally understand that. And part of uh, so much of my teaching now uh, has uh, very often, I mentioned even on, uh, on Time for Hope, um, I mentioned that when we're going through trials, when we're going through suffering and pain and loss, which is grief, uh, uh, you know, tremendous uh, pain, um, that we are to mine that mountain. It's a, it's a, it's a, my, a mountain that needs to be mined for gold oh, because wow, there will be gold in whatever we're going through, no matter how hard it is to get to, uh, go through, uh, whatever. God wouldn't allow, I, I, I taught for the American Association of Christian Counselors for several years across, across the nation. And I said, when we're going through something, God either is allowing it, or as with Job, because he, Satan got permission to, to yeah, test permission. Job, yep. uh, he's either allowing it, or he is ordering it. And you're talking about the ordering process, right. the, the, so that, uh, but he always has a purpose. Amen. And we need to find out, be concerned, not about why God, why this, why that, why the other, but what is it, God, you're trying to teach me? That's what great. is the purpose about all of this? Now, I'll say this too. Um, you know, when you're being broken, it's not a place that you like to be at because it's very painful. People can betray you. Bad things can happen to Nothing you. Nothing can, uh, even knowing the truth about it, you, right. you're still going to hurt and, and go right. through some of the pain, so, or go through the pain. So what happened to me is um, I got so beaten down during some of these periods of time that I felt so humbled and so broken that I said, well, I guess I'm no use to God anymore. And he said something interesting to me that I think many of us can learn from. He said, you know, when you thought you were qualified, you were totally unqualified. He said, but the minute that you realized you weren't qualified, that's when I decided to use you. And so he began to restore me. Yeah, he began to restore me out of those times of hardships and showing me that it's, it was never me, it was him. Now, the, the, the trying to, or thinking and considering suicide, which I've gone through with many, uh, several, or many counselees, uh, was that, that was before you were converted, wasn't that was, it? That was actually how I got saved. I told him if he was real, he'd let me live from the car wreck, and if he did, I would serve him. And I ran to church that following Sunday and gave my life to the Lord at that point. Great, that sounds like a good, uh, place to go out on for this week. Uh, I have some things to share from a couple of viewers, but we're, we're going to do another week uh, since you're here and you're okay. willing to do that. And, the, and there's plenty of more stuff we would like to share. So we'll be taking it up again uh, next week. So you just sit there and uh, we'll uh, see what these, these viewers have to say. And then we'll start week two. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, I, uh, I have the first one is uh, a prayer request, which we invite each and all of you to do, is to send in prayer requests to us. And I always assure you that your prayer requests will get uh, honored. We try never to fail, never to fail, praying over any and every prayer request that comes in to Time for Hope. We have a Monday morning devotional worship service here, and that's when we take up the prayer requests. And sometimes they're so urgent, I take them up even when uh, before then when they come in. So the first one I'm sharing with you says, Dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for me that God would heal all of my wounds and show me his ways. What a great prayer request. Wisdom and knowledge. 
also pray that he would help me separate myself from the things that weigh me down and lead me down the wrong paths. She's asking for a breaking, isn't she? Yes, she, is. she certainly is. She has a great understanding of God dealing uh, dealings, and she's asking for them. Amen. And then I have an encouraging um, note from a viewer, which. I need encouragement just like everybody else does, and so I enjoy and appreciate your uh, sending in your encouraging remarks about m myself and my ministry. Dear Dr. Frieda, I loved uh, a recent Time for Hope program, and I ordered the book that was offered. I love the book, and I'm learning so much from it about spiritual warfare and how to stand against the enemy's attacks. And I certainly appreciate uh, that, and we're so happy that we uh, had uh, that pastor in and had that book uh, to offer you and that you were wise to get it because even with um, Bacon, uh, Michael, Michael's uh, show, Michael Bacon's um, book, we're only going to be able, and you hear it over and over and over from me, to t uh, touch the tip of the iceberg of what's in this book. So don't think because you see two weeks on a show that you've gotten everything a book has to offer. So I'm encouraging you to make sure you get a copy of Michael's book to finish the rest of the story, so to speak. And we're going to be pick, picking up, which I've already said, with another week uh, with uh, Michael and his book titled Broken for a Purpose. So we look forward and I encourage you to join us again next week on Time for Hope. Thank you for watching Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. We offer a free fact sheet with more information on today's topic. Call or write us to get your copy today. The resource we are offering this week is available for a donation of at least $10 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304 or visit our website at timeforhope.org As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support the Time for Hope ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send a gift to Time for Hope, you are joining in the ministry to which God has called us. It will also enable us to inform and inspire viewers to become students of God's Word and grow closer to Him and in turn, minister more effectively to others as God gives them opportunity. Look for Dr. Frieda's scriptural devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. And to see this program again online, visit our website or search for the Time for Hope TV ministry on YouTube, iTunes, Roku, or Facebook. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is Time for Hope.